Hey NBA 2K fans, in this video we're going to talk about how to scout prospects in NBA 2K, the My GM and My League modes. If you're new to the channel, I'm Coach 2K. If you love basketball and love NBA 2K, you're going to want to subscribe to the channel and also click the bell to get notified whenever I upload anything new so you don't miss a single NBA 2K video that I put out. All right, with that out of the way, let's get started and talk about how to scout prospects in these modes. Most of the options you're going to need to scout for prospects are going to be found under the Scouting tab in the My GM and My League modes. The most obvious one is the Prospect Scouting option, and when you select that, that's going to take you to a list of all the prospects that you'll be able to choose from when you draft in the upcoming draft in the offseason. Scouting for prospects is really a two-step process. The first is identifying the type of player that you want to add to your team. And the second step of the process is just identifying the best player that fits the type you're looking for. Okay, so let's focus on step one and that's identifying the type of player that you want to add to your team. Because the clearer vision you have of the type of team you want to put on the floor, the much easier it is going to be to determine who you want your scouts to focus on so you know the best player out of all the prospects to draft in the upcoming draft. A popular strategy when people draft is to just take the best player available and there's a lot of positive things that can come from that however taking the best player available may not be the best player for your team and this is why sitting down and thinking about the type of team that you want to build is the most important first step you can do because that'll really clarify who you want to take instead of just saying I want to take the best player available the next thing you're going to want to do after you identify the type of team you want to build is you just want to take a good careful look at the players on your roster and just ask yourself if those players are going to be a good fit on that type of team. After you assess your roster and determine who on your roster would fit your concepts of the team you're trying to build, that's going to give you a clear picture of where the holes on your team that you're going to need to fill. So. Let me give you an example here that is pretty basic, but it might help make sense of how this process works. So I'm currently doing an NBA 2K My GM Challenge on my channel, and I'll put a link up in the corner to this series first episode. So if you want to check that out, you can. But the idea behind it, it's a hometown players challenge. And what I'm trying to do is to bring only players that have connections to Indiana to the Indiana Pacers and I want my whole team to be guys from Indiana. So when I'm scouting for players, this makes it really easy and simple because the type of player I'm looking for is somebody who went to Indiana. Now that was a basic example, but what it illustrates is, is that when you have a really, really clear picture of the type of team you want to build, it's much easier to decide who you want to, you know, who you want to scout and who you want to maybe add to your team. Now once you have a clear picture of the type of team you want to build, well then you've got to look at your roster and you just got to ask yourself who on this roster do I want to see on that final vision of I, that I have for a team and then that'll tell you kind of what holes you need to fill in your team. So let's do an example here with this team that I'm building in my MyGM series with the hometown players. Now what I've done here, I've sorted the roster by position, and right now we're looking at point guard. At point guard here, I have three players. I have Aaron Holiday, TJ McConnell, and Jeff T. Now of these three players, the only guy that has any sort of connection to Indiana is Jeff T. So in my vision of my final team, a hometown roster, I'd have three deep at point guard, and all three of these guys would be have some sort of connection to Indiana. So that would be Teague would get a remain, but I do want to move McConnell and Holiday. 
And Teague, on top of that, is getting older. I mean, he's 33 years old. So this tells me that I got a hole at point guard that needs to be addressed to try and fulfill my vision of the team at point guard. And so when I'm scouting players, that's something I want to consider. Then you just move to the next position and you ask yourself the same thing. So in my case, I look at the three guys at shooting guard here. Oladipo, he went to IU. Connaughton, he went to Notre Dame. And Drew Fuller, who I drafted in the last draft, he also went to Indiana. So these three players all fit my vision of the final team I have in mind. So that means that, you know, I don't have as big a hole here that I do at point guard. So I have three guys here, and if there's a guy that's head and shoulders, I'm going to take him. But if everybody's about the same, then I'm going to opt to go to point guard and try and fill that need first. Then I look at small forward. I have two guys at small forward. I have Robinson and Edwards, both who fit my criteria. They're, they have Indiana connections, but I'm a little thin at small forward. So I have a little bit of a need there to get another small forward that is from Indiana in some way. Probably not as much of a need as I do have at point guard though. So I need somebody higher rated here. That would be great. I can fill that either through the draft or through free agency. And so that's also something then that I'd want to take a look at in terms of scouting for players to see if there's any good small forwards that meet my criteria. Somebody from connections with Indiana. And just to go ahead and finish up the rest of the roster here, looking at power forward, I have two guys with Indiana connections, Noah Vonley and Trey Lyles. And these two guys are not from Indiana. My vision of a team would have three guys at this spot that have Indiana connections, and I only have two, so I have a little bit of a need there. And on top of that, I know from my experience with the team already, I want to get rid of Trey Lyles. So I really have a bigger need at power forward than it looks like, and so that's something that I'd probably want to scout a prospect for. And at center, looking at center, Miles Turner doesn't have any Indiana connections, but Brian and Plumley do, so I do have a need at the center spot in terms of a prospect as well. So looking at the roster, that helps you figure out where your holes are in terms of the type of player you might want to look for. And I could probably use somebody at center. I could probably use somebody at power forward, somebody at small forward. I'm pretty set at shooting guard. And I probably feel like I have the biggest need at point guard. Okay, then once you've identified the type of team you want to build, You've assessed your roster to see where there's need. Well, then you're going to fill that need either through the draft or through free agency. And so what you want to do is you go into the prospect scouting and you take a look at the prospects and you identify the prospects that fit your criteria. So in my case, that's going to be guys that have some sort of connection to Indiana. And you can see right away, I've sorted this by college. And so I have one, two, three, four, five guys, either from Indiana or Indiana State. Here's a guy from Notre Dame I'd be interested in taking a look at. And then here are a couple guys from Purdue. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my draft board and I'm gonna add the guys that I identified that I wanna know more about and I'm gonna add them to the draft board so I can keep track of these players. So what I've done is I've written these guys' names down and I just have to find them inside of the draft class that's inside the game. So the first guy I want to look at is Scott Hill. So then he's on the draft board. So let me add the rest of these guys that I wrote down and then we'll talk about this draft board a little more. All right, so here's my completed draft board of guys that I'm interested in having scouted because these guys fit the criteria of the type of player that I want to have on my team. And I'll ask my scout to look deeper into these guys and then I can keep track of them here on the draft board. So like if he comes back and says, hey, you know what? Horace Nash is the best possible prospect out there in his opinion. Well, then I'll rank Horace Nash here at number one on my list too. 
and then over the course of the season I can go in here and kind of rank him based on the information he gives me. Now I know that's a very narrow way to build a team, but I think because that's such a basic way to do it, it helps you better understand the process of how to find what you're looking for. And the key is just knowing what type of team that you want to build in the first place. And if you know what type of team you want to build, well then that, that helps you figure out who you want to target in free agency. That helps you figure out who you want to target in the draft. You know, for example, let's say you want to build a big three. Well, you have a skeleton here of what a big three team looks like by looking at like the 07, 08 Boston Celtics. And so you can just look at players on a roster like this and try and recreate that in your My GM and My League process. Now, you're not limited to just like the big three. You could build teams like with Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. Or maybe a team with a dominant inside outside attack like the Lakers with Shaq and Kobe. Or maybe you want to build a team around a certain attribute like a really fast team, a great defensive team. The possibilities are endless, but whatever you decide, the process is going to be the same. You identify the type of team you want to build. You identify who's on your roster that fits that and where the holes are, and then you start looking in a free agency. And then in the draft, you look for prospects that fit that criteria. Now, if you go through the process that I just gave you, that'll give you a good picture of the types of players that you want to scout. After you know that, then you've got to kind of go through the mechanics of how to scout inside the game. So that's what we're going to get into now. And you can see here, it kind of all starts with your head scout. That's what I'm on right now. My head scout is Kenny Johnston. His scouting is B minus. He may not be the best scout in the game, but I typically don't fire people until their contract's up unless they're just really poor. But the scout is going to be my helper in kind of evaluating these prospects. So you want to have the best scout you can, and that'll help your, pros your scouting uh, efforts tremendously. The other thing you want to do is you want to have your settings set right so that the scout will come to you. So under your options tab you want to make sure that in your My GM settings that your prospect scouting is turned off because if it's turned on your scout's going to do all the scouting on his own. He's never going to come to you for direction. So with this off He's going to come to you and go, hey, you know, I'm ready to start scouting. What do you want me to do? But again, if it's turned off, he's not going to come to see you. And you're going to be going, how do I scout people? Because you know, I can't figure out how to do it. So the first step is make sure this is off. With that setting turned off, what will happen is that around the middle of November or so, you're going to get contacted by the scout and he's going to start working with you. So I point all that out because if you've gone into the prospect scouting and you've just selected a prospect you're interested in and you've selected them and you're like, well, there's no way to scout them. What do I do here? Well, this is the reason why is because your scout kind of has to be involved in the process. Otherwise, you're not going to get the option to scout specific players. So mid-November, here's my scout. He's come in. He said, hey, I need some direction on who you want me to scout. Now, when your scout's talking to you, he's going to give you the options to pick who you want to scout. So you can pick prospects, you can scout by position here, or you can have the scout always handle it. Now remember, I don't recommend that you have the scout always handle it once you start getting familiar with the MyGM files, because if you select that option, then it just automates the process, and you'll never see the scout again until you switch that automation off. So I suggest staying away from Scout Always Handle and make sure you have him working on something. Now he's going to come back every couple weeks and give you an update on what he's found out. And then if you have him continue to work on stuff, every time you do that, you'll build trust with your Scout, which is a positive thing to do. Now in the case of my hometown roster project, it's pretty easy for me to identify who I want the Scout to take a look at. And so I'll pick the prospects based on what I showed you earlier. 
However, if, if you're not sure which specific prospects you want to look at, you can just choose by position. If you do that, you're going to get an option here to choose the best available first round, second round, or sleepers. And, you know, a lot of what you're cho going to choose there is going to be based on where you're going to draft at. So if you have a, a high first round draft pick, then best available might make sense. But if you're not going to draft to the second round, then it might be you might want to focus on, you know, somebody in the second round. So we're going to choose best available here. And then he's going to come back in a few weeks. He comes back in a couple weeks to let me know. And so we're going to sim ahead and we're going to see what happens when he comes back to us. So here we are. It's a couple weeks later. Here's the head scout again saying, hey, I've got this report on who you asked me to, to scout. You want to take a look at it. Of course, you do want to take a look at it. And here is the report that he's put together for us. And you can see that it's all point guards here. If I go down the list here, that's because we told him to find us a point guard and scout the best available ones out there. And then this tells you how much, how what kind of progress he's made. So he's not completely done with these, uh, evaluating these players because it doesn't say 100% yet. And you want to get the players that you're interested in drafting to be 100%. That way you can have a full report on that specific player before you draft him. Now, once you've looked at the report, he's going to ask you, hey, what do you want me to do now? And so you could just have him continue to do what he's doing until he gets those specific prospects evaluated 100% if you want. So here we're going to ask him again at point guard to look at the best available ones. And he's going to say, hey, that's great. I'll be back in a couple weeks. And you can see the trust level went up. So every time this scout comes in, you can build trust with him, which you can't do if you have that automated. You're never going to gain any trust with your scout. And that's kind of an important facet of the MyGM is to develop good relationships with the front office staff, of which your head scout is one of those people. So a few more weeks have gone by. The head scout comes back in, says, hey, I got more information for you. So you definitely want to view the report. And now you see some of these guys are at 100%. Now, once your scout has evaluated a player at 100%, there's a lot of information in here you can take a look at. One, there's an estimate of what overall the player might be. And there's rankings here of, you know, how good a player this is compared to other players in the draft and where they might go in the draft a scouting report on the type of player they might be, uh, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, whether they have any medical conditions that you need to be concerned about. You're going to get some stats, you're going to get some grades, uh, potential attributes, tendencies. Uh, if you've got the stories turned on, which I think you should, I did a video on these uh, uh, stories. If you want to put, uh, check out the video I did, I'll put a link up in the corner for that. But this kind of highlights some good things that's been happening to this player in college. And so those are nice touches. You can kind of get more information about the type of player that uh, that prospect is. Potential badges. So you can see there's a lot here that you can see. Now, this report is not written in stone. And what I mean by that is, is the quality of this report really just is determined by the quality of your scout. If you had another scout in there, they may come up with something entirely different than your scout did. So just keep in mind that that's, you know, it's just a projection based on what your scout thinks, but it does give you a pretty good idea. And again, every time he gives you a report, he's going to ask you again, hey, who should I, who should I focus on now? And you always want to give him assignment. That way he's going to come back every two weeks and you can build up trust with him. So if you wanted to pick prospects specifically, you could do that. And so what I did this time is I picked specific prospects. All the guys that are from Indiana colleges are guys that I want him to scout. And you can see right now we don't know what the player's overall is. We really don't know a whole lot about the player. But he's going to start working on them and then come back and give me a report. Now what I'll do is he keeps coming back every couple weeks. And so I just have him scout the same guys over and over until they're 100%, and then I choose new guys. And it could be that I have him, 
he already evaluated everybody to 100%, and I don't need him to scout anybody else. But I still have him keep scouting, so that way he keeps coming in every couple weeks, and I keep getting this trust factor here to go up. So even if I don't really want him to do anything more, I still have him come back every couple of weeks so that we can take advantage of that aspect of the game. Now, in between the visits that your scout makes to you to give you updates, you can always go under the scouting tab and look at the prospect scouting and look at what's going on with that particular scouting report. So here we're looking at Sid Smart. He's already 100% scouted, so we can review that information. And we can also find other things like uh, where he's expected to be drafted. So like in the case of Sid Smart here, everybody kind of considers him the consensus number one pick. So that tells us Sid Smart's probably a pretty good player. Same thing with Manning here. Manning is number two, number one in a couple of them. And so you can get some extra information from these prospect reports and obviously the ones that are 100% you're gonna get full information on, but the ones that aren't at 100%, then you're not gonna get a complete picture until they are. Now, if you remember, I put the specific people that I was interested in having my scout evaluate on my own draft board here. So I can go in here and get a quick look at each of the players that I'm asking uh, the scout to evaluate quickly because they're all in one place. So that's what's really nice about the draft board. It can help you remember who you want the scout to uh, evaluate. And once they're 100%, you'll have them all in one place here. And you can add or remove people. You can reorganize them based on how you want to put them in order on your draft board. So there's several features here that make this kind of nice. Now, because we're scouting potential draft picks, it's good to know if you're gonna be picking and whether you have a first or second round pick and kind of get a rough idea where you're gonna pick at so that you know who you want your scout to evaluate uh, because you want them to evaluate players that'll potentially be there at the pick you wanna draft at. So here in the front office, you can view your picks and in the upcoming draft, I have a first round and a second round pick. So that means I wanna be prepared to draft wherever I might draft and have guys scouted for that that'll be available at that particular pick. And you can go into these mock drafts under the scouting tab and kind of get an idea of where everybody's going to go. So you can see right now I'm projected to have the number seven pick and they're suggesting that William Moore would be available and that's who I might end up going with. So these mock drafts will give you an idea of where potential players might go. So if I was interested in William Moore, I'd want to look at each of the mock drafts. So here's uh, Draft Express, 2K Sports. Let's look for William here. There's William Moore. He goes five instead of seven. And then if we have the NBA.com. William Moore is number two. So if I was drafting deep into the, you know, late in the first round, I, there's no chance I'm going to get William Moore. I probably wouldn't care if I scouted him. But if I was up at the top, and I was close to the number one pick, I would be interested in having my scout evaluate William Moore, uh, most definitely. And then you can also go under the big boards here and they kind of list all the prospects in order of how they think they are, both each service, Draft Express, 2K Sports, NBA.com, and you can sort it by point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, centers, so you can get a good picture of who's going to be available in the draft to give you maybe a good idea of who you might want to scout to. Okay, that's a good overview of how to scout prospects in NBA 2K. I broke it down into a couple of steps there. You know, the first being you got to identify your team, assess your roster, see where your needs are, and then identify the type of players you want to fill those positions. And then you want to work with your scout to evaluate the type of players that you're looking for and you can narrow it down by knowing the type of team you're trying to build. So, you know, that's that's the approach I take and, you know, obviously you can always go with the best available player and, you know, take that strategy too. But uh, what I wanted to try and accomplish with this video is to just kind of 
go through how the whole process works and give you a good example of how you might approach it. So let me know down in the comments if this helped you out. Uh, let me know what kind of strategy you take, if I left anything out. And if you like the video, be sure and hit the like button. It helps the channel out. And also, if you haven't subscribed, be sure and do that. And check out my other videos on my channel. All right, I'm Coach 2K. I'll see you on the court in the next video. Thanks for watching.